Okay, as a reminder, the work done by a conservative force only depends on the endpoints. Okay, and because of that, um, that means that we don't have to worry about the specific path that an object moves through when work is done on it. We can think of the work as changing the state of a system. So um, essentially, by ignoring the path, um, by only focusing on the endpoints, we can consider those two endpoints to be what's important, rather than the process by which the work is done. Um, and we can even think of this as by um, going from one state to another, the uh, system itself can then do work. So work is done on the system during that process, but the system can do work on something outside of the system in that process. Okay, so this leads us to an idea. So if the um, changes within the system are able to allow the system to do work, we can think of the system's state with the, the status that it has, its particular configuration at an instant in time, as having an ability to do work. In other words, we can think of that as a type of energy. Okay, and we call that potential energy. Okay, so let's define that. All right, so the way we define potential energy, um, which has a couple of different variables, this is not totally standard. So sometimes people will just do PE, um, that's usually pretty clear, or you can also do U, that's the other really common one, I'm not sure why. Um, and the way that we define the potential energy is if we consider the work that is um, done by an external force on a system then we define that to be equal to negative the change in the potential energy of the system that contains the force. Okay, so um, on the right-hand side, the force that's doing work on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, that is an internal force. Okay, so we're considering two different systems on the left-hand side of this equation than the right. On the left, the force is external, so it's not part of the system. On the right, everything that is exerting a force on each other is inside the system. Okay, so let's just do a quick example to show how that works. Okay, so let's imagine that there's a ball um, that's some distance above the surface of the Earth. Okay, um, the way that we've covered this so far, we've considered just the ball in the system. Okay, so as this ball falls, um, the Earth does external work on the ball. Okay. Um, in addition, the work is positive. But now we have a definition for potential energy. So we can reconsider this in a slightly different way. Okay, so now we're going to have the same ball and the same earth. But this time I want to consider a system that includes both the ball and the earth. Okay, so now the earth is inside the system and the earth cannot do work on the ball because the earth is inside the system. So a system can't do work on itself. But what we have instead is that the ball earth system is going to have a negative change in potential energy. Okay, so um, as the ball falls, the potential energy of the ball Earth system is going to be converted into kinetic energy. So there's a decrease in that potential energy. Okay, so here we have delta U is less than zero. Okay, so we can see this relationship um, in the definition of the potential energy um, to work that if we consider a system that there's external work done, then we get a situation like that on the left. And if we consider a situation where that force that would be doing work is inside the system so that it's an internal force, then instead we can consider that um, a change in potential energy. Okay, the only kinds of forces that we can do this with are conservative forces. That's why we defined that concept. Um, conservative forces we can define a potential energy for, non-conservative forces that's not possible.